Okay, um, so afternoon everyone. Uh, I'm Zhen Song from uh, Open Source Group uh, Samsung Research UK. Today I'd like to talk to you about uh, IoT.js. It's a JavaScript platform for Internet of Things. So before the talk, I to start talk, I'd like to show you the light demo. There is a little bit, I was planning to do the real demo. Unfortunately, my this uh, laptop has a little bit of issues connected to my access point. So I'll show you video first, and then later, if we have time, we get connected, we'll show you more, hopefully, in real. Uh, then we'll go, after the demo, we'll go behind the scenes and of the demo, and we're going to introduce you the platform, IoT.js itself. Um, in the demo, we actually introduced the uh, um, Blink T module for the light here. So we're going to show you how the JS code was written for this module, and also work you through to integrate this module into IoT.js platform. So for the demo part, sorry for, it uh, might be a little bit disappointing, but I'll uh, just so show you the video first, and then hopefully we have a chance to do some more later. Short demo, ex ex I will explain later. So it's quite simple, the demo. What I have here, actually inside this case, I have this uh, Raspberry Pi. Show you the architecture first. I have this Raspberry Pi Zero W board. And uh, we have actually, uh, and this is an array of GPIO port. And we have this uh, one row of eight LED light, which is actually like a hat mounted on the GPIO port. So, uh, the Pi itself uh, is about uh, 512k uh, uh, RAM, and uh, I think that the the flash I have actually here is a 16 gig. We did we did have a 8 gig runs, but this doesn't matter because it's plenty plenty for running IoT.js and uh, uh, JavaScript on it. To be honest, the JavaScript uh, is so much small. It's uh, we're actually targeting like. Uh, and there are 128K for RAM, and for Flash is actually under one Mac. So it's, a, it's, it's quite impressive, there's a great script engine. And um, in this board, we have, we runs, um, this board runs really Raspbian, the Raspberry Pi Linux uh, distribution. Then we install the IoT.js. IoT.js is repository, you put, you put the source actually has uh, not only has the platform itself, it also has the JavaScript, the ultra lightweight uh, JavaScript engine. And also, we also have this uh, event IO controlling, event, uh, event IO handling uh, library, libtuv. Uh, so, and then on the top of the platform, we have our demo, and the, the demo code actually based on the Blink T module we introduced into LT.js platform. So the scenario for this demo, very, very simple. <laughs> so what you do is the demo app pulling the current weather data through cloud, cloud API, uh, where, so the data actually provided by openweathermap.org. So we're actually calling the API, uh, the, the, the API actually provided by, by them, and then we actually using user authentication code to get the data. You, got, you need to register your app to the to the to, to the third party org organization, and then upon the data received, and the app will decide whether to turn the light on off or change the flashing patterns. The use case for this really I know because my colleague did a street light demo before <laughs> last year, so we're thinking like. Uh, this is a really good idea, you know. You upon the visibility, you the data current visibility you have, and then you turn the light on off. Considering a smart city situation, how much energy you're gonna save? And just actually, what you need, obviously, not this light, 
but just with a small chip like this, five, six pounds, you know. So the app itself, because the app itself actually using the typical, actually the, the generic uh, API spread provided by IoT, IoT, IoTJS platform, so pulling data from a third party cloud, we use HTTP request. HTTPS request, and then controlling the blink light, we're actually using the GPIO APIs, which provided by the platform itself already. So the whole demo actually, we, I think it's worth mentioning, but including the module we introduced, blink light module, and also demo apps, they are fully in JavaScript. So why JavaScript? Can I ask how many of you are JavaScript developers? See, this is the reason why, because we have a pool, big pool of developers here. And the other reason is safe, because uh, uh, I think in JavaScript you can't, you know, they have control on memory access. So for manufacturers, they, if they don't want you to access their memories, JavaScript probably is one of the good options. So all the, this demo basically is based on IoT.js. What is IoT.js? As we mentioned earlier, it is a platform. It's an IoT platform. It's a, uh, for, you, you enable you to use JavaScript to write your IoT applications. And the platform obviously based on web technology, but uh, this platform actually heavily rely on the engine running under it. That's JavaScript engine. So when we design this, um, this is this platform. We actually have a bear in mind the success story of Node.js. So the architecture itself is trying to be as close, as friendly, as much to Node.js. And uh, on the other hand, we try to make the memory cons performance, memory consumption, as less as possible to fit more constrained devices. The obviously the web we run here is JavaScript uh, application, <coughs> and uh, as you see, that is actually be able to access uh, HTTP, is be able to access uh, GPIO. Obviously, there are a lot more modules that are already been provided by the platform itself, including file system, uh, night, and uh, a lot, a lot more. I will show you later. So this is the architecture, uh, architecture of uh, IoT.js. Um, Two things, actually. The, uh, as, I'm say, as I mentioned before, when you download the source itself, the platform source itself, you actually already have JavaScript and the lib2v included. JavaScript is the rock for IoT.js platform. It is ultra light engine, so the bending from the platform to ECMA script really depends on JavaScript. And lib2v, is actually refactoring of lib UV library that used by Node.js. So we refactor and make it use less memory consumption, better performance for embedded system. And we are trying at this moment, we're discussing on IoT bindings to different platforms. One of the options is OCF, Open, Open Connected Foundations Activity, because we we have been dis, uh, involved in LTVT before, and still involving, I guess, yeah. And that's one option, but obviously we actually consider other popular used uh, IoT platforms. So the core of the IoT is actually native, basically native C code, and on the top, when we wrap it up into a set of uh, JavaScript APIs, and uh, apart from these APIs. We created the, the, the architecture itself is very modular, so a, a set of modules like file system network. This is quite similar to Node.js. So as a JavaScript de developer, to be honest, you probably don't need to worry too much about under layer. What you need to do is just go up, go call the uh, JavaScript APIs. So mention the rock for the JavaScript, uh, JavaScript uh, uh, for LTJS is JavaScript. Um, we Actually, from the group we have presented JavaScript in the last, uh, last couple of years, it's, it's, a, it's really very good, compact, lightweight engine. So this uh, JavaScript, 
uh, was, desi was designed from scratch by Samsung. Initially, from the beginning, the design aim was to make it uh, for in, uh, constrained devices. So Barry, this, this idea is always, always through. Even the name Jerry actually come from the uh, Tom Jerry. So it's, <laughs> yeah, so it's a small and a smart and fast, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. So the optimization work for this uh, engine has been really continuously. Even last year, we actually have about uh, two, another hundred percent improvement of performance. The, 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 the th this is always the JavaScript uh, top priority. Lower, uh, get the reduced memory footprint, increase performance, and the engine itself is really self-contained, very portable. So you might see other places, IoT platform also use uh, JavaScript. So the latest status for JavaScript is uh, it's been transferred to JavaScript Foundation in 2016 and uh, so 2016 under Big Umbrella, and uh, the, some new features introduced uh, I think uh, last year. Yeah, so we have a debugger for JavaScript. So JavaScript debugger you can use a command line. If you're familiar with GDB, you probably don't need to go through any menu. Just uh, whatever GDB has, uh, you know, you can use straight with the command. And also there is. Um, Web IDE debugger, so uh, you know it's just allowing you to, you know, use the UI set up your breakpoint and work through your code. Um, yes, uh, JavaScript group actually been fully in line with the uh, yes, uh, yes uh, 5.1. So we passed all the confirmation tests. So now uh, then some new features have been introduced in ES6, including promise type array. But uh, to in, we, we, we're careful in introducing new features because there is a balance on rich features and uh, you know lower memory. So, but this is this is um, the yes the feature further work is going to be carried on. You know, can, can more feature will be introduced. And uh, last year, especially last year, JavaScript actually got a lot more. Last couple of years got a lot more interest, especially last year we got a lot more contribution, contributions from other, you know, community members, and the, which actually result a lot more hardware board support, like ARM and Band. The, so the latest status for LTGS is uh, is uh, that uh, the big the big milestone is. Uh, Released a uh, stable release actually 1.0 in July last year, and uh, as we seen early, basically has a libtuv in it, and the modular system. The modular system basically has has two layers. One is uh, on the native level, so it's C code. So if it, the code actually structure is very tidy and clean, so you go inside, you see actually see the native code actually each module very tidy listed, and then you go to JS directory, you can another list of uh, module in, in JS format. And the Node.js um, um, Node friendly architecture, which, uh, you know, LibTV is a very good example. And we also introduced, uh, um, sorry, we also introduced uh, a, a big sub up subset of uh, Node.js, like a file system, HTTP, actually HTTPS, actually, I just used it early. It's not fully supported HTTPS, uh, not every feature is fully supported, but this uh, HTTPS request is definitely working, I can, I can confirm that. And the re actually support this subset of Node.js module actually is, is really make the developer's life very easy. If you, you are very familiar with Node.js development, and some of the code, if we support the same module, you can just uh, seamlessly use the same code for uh, LT.js. Probably most of them without any modification. And obviously vice versa, most of the sample code in LT.js, you can use in, LT, in Node.js. And obviously a list of IO uh, control, like uh, I use the GPL, and we also have uh, I2C, SPY, um, quite a few other support. So from developer point of view, I look at this uh, blink light module. So the blink light module basically what uh, 
this actually is quite a popularly used in a lot of demos, this light. So we look at um, uh, what's what available. Actually, there are Python code obviously available. And the uh, good thing is uh, Node.js also have this NPM module. So for us, actually, the natural point obviously is starting with, with Node.js module and uh, see also one way to check the capability for us. So the module itself, we check the Node.js code. It's actually quite, you know, quite straightforward. The only difference we need to change is um, how to access the GPIO port. And Node.js link, a Blink T module using this um, another library. It's uh, varying pi, if you familiar with varying pi library. Varying pi library basically provides the native access for GPIO for Blink T. But in our case, actually, it's so straightforward because IoT.js platform already provided the API for GPIO access. So the example really is like uh, for us to control the light, really we need to configure, we just need to configure two GPIO ports. One is for data, the other is for clock. So just call the APIs straight away like this, you know, configure the APIs. The next part is to write your, your, your data into the, uh, write your data with the latching line on off. Uh, yeah, I think uh, this is this is really pretty much it. You know, quite straightforward. And uh, after you have your own module library uh, created and then integrated to um, LTGS, really just add your module into the the file, the JSON file, and then get a build enabled when you when you build it. So. I mean, it's really straightforward, really. So to wrap up, really, uh, what, I, what to wrap up? So what I have here is uh, uh, IoT.js platform. It's a J, uh, it's a JS platform for Internet of Things based on JavaScript, the Arch Lightweight JavaScript engine, and create a module on create your own module library to the platform. Really, just a few steps away. So we really hope you, if you in your JavaScript developer for IoT, we hope you crack on and uh, enjoy using IoT.js. Thank you. I'm just trying if I, 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 I can do questions actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Reboot could help, but in order to Wi Fi. Yes, yeah. Questions is fine. Yeah, Let's okay. do questions. Let's do a few questions and then maybe uh, try to uh, connect to the Wi Fi and give the demo uh, anyhow. So, uh, to, who has any questions? Do you need any? Uh, that doesn't connect, uh, I think. Do you want to destroy your screen? Yes, uh, yeah, phone? question. Do you have any idea of the smallest mm -hmm. microcontroller that could run JavaScript? Yes. Uh, Can you repeat the question? Yes, the question is. Uh, Really, how small the how, how small the memory footprint for microcontroller when you run JavaScript, right? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. How then? How does it compare, like, to if you were to write a similar code in C? Like, have you do you have any ideas of a ben benchmark and things like The that? benchmark to compare this uh, the code you write uh, in JavaScript with C, native code of C, right? Yeah. Okay. First thing is uh, the footprint for JavaScript. Uh, the main, the, we had a build actually under about 200k. Okay. So it built for ARM SOM2, so it's about 143k. So uh, really, you know, you don't, you don't need much memory for that. Uh, compared with C, we haven't uh, actually, I haven't come across any comparison with C native code. Mm. Mm. But there is a reason, because it's JavaScript. <laughs> Because we actually, because if you think about, we're actually using C code under, and then we wrap uh, on the top with JavaScript, with, with JavaScript. So there must be, you know, just like using, even with the same platform, using C code, access the, access the, the hardware, and then you're using the same C code, but on the top, you wrap up with the Java, JavaScript. So I would, con I would assume that it should be, take more, it will take more memory. But but do you know how much, or do you have an idea? <coughs> I, I actually haven't got the idea, but considering how much the JavaScript already, how small it is, mm. okay. yeah.
Okay. You think you're connected? Yeah. Okay, let's see how it goes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can, I can do more. More questions? Or? It, it's a very good question, actually. Why we use Raspberry Pi? Because we already had some, we can support such a small microcontroller. Because of the popularity of um, Raspberry Pi. That's the main thing. But uh, of course, we'll be welcome to, for, to you, you know, if you try one small c controller. And uh, we will welcome to. You know, if you have any experience, share with us. We will really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Does it support SPI and uh, SPC? It's, it's got all the usual support for all the usual stuff that they're in my control. Yeah. Say it again, in the microcontroller. Uh, yes, yeah. It's, a, it's actually support quite a few different uh, boards, yeah, microcontroller, yeah. Obviously, as, as we said, that uh, uh, you know, JavaScript is modular, uh, modular is, is modular uh, engine. So you, when you build it, actually you link to whatever module you need. So don't don't build it uh, with everything in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Mistype it, yeah. Let me just, uh, since it is connected, let me just uh, run you through. Uh, the demo. Watch the light, hopefully. Here we go. Yeah, she's quite lovely, actually. Because, uh, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. We can do one or more two questions if, if you want. Yeah, sure. Some time. So sure. there's still some time for one or two questions. So for people who really care about the footprint of the performance, is it possible or and or advice to write mm -hmm. the the module in C and then just create a JavaScript wrapper if I want to. Yeah. That is possible, yeah. Yeah. You can actually you can fiddle the C code anyway. Right. Yeah. 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 One more? I don't know if there's still one question. Yeah. Uh, I saw the Tizen. How does the IoTJS relate to Tizen? IoT the JS uh, um it's it supports Tizen RT. Yeah. That's my colleague. Uh, he, you know, Phil got the got IoT JS runs on Tesla Yeah. Right. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much.